Hi, this is Mark from LongOutWatch.com, and today I want to show you two new Hemel watches, um, Stratus watches. They're super cool, but the one that really caught my eye is the quartz one. It's a quartz and an automatic. You know, it's kind of like the same case. One's quartz driven, one's uh, automatic movement. And oddly enough, it's the quartz one that really grabbed me. So we're going to check those out today. What am I sporting? Well, I guess I am sporting a quartz. Uh, maybe it's my favorite quartz watch. Uh, Breitling Aerospace, Titanium. People have been asking about this watch. Um, in case you don't know, this is a early 90s? Uh, early to mid 90s vintage. Um, Breitling did up the case size a little bit. Um, Evo, I believe. I I'm not really well versed in it. And then they also added a backlight. This does not have the backlight, and this is not the larger size. Um, and uh, my favorite automatic, an Islander. Uh, people ask me if I grabbed one of those ISL 18 watches, the blue dial. I did not. They all sold out, and uh, more will come, and hopefully I'll grab one then. Anyway, uh, let's check out these two new Hemels for you. So I've got two Hemel watches for you. They are both part of the Stratus collection. Uh, I have the automatic in my left hand. I have the quartz in my right hand. And at first glance, you probably cannot tell if you're just looking at the seconds hand. And that's kind of what I really dug about uh, this quartz-based watch. So cool. This is running on a battery. Check that out. But I guess first we'll go over the automatic, because I have to. And then we'll get into the quartz one. Um, they're, but they're both pretty much the same watch, same size case. Uh, so uh, this is, again, the Hemel Stratus. This is the automatic watch. Uh, with sapphire crystal, so we're looking at 42 millimeters in diameter, 15 millimeters thick to an AR flat sapphire crystal. It is 49 millimeters lug tip to lug tip. You see how nice they, nice and sharp the lugs bend down. Makes it very comfortable. 20 millimeter lug, which is again not something you normally would see on a 42 millimeter watch, but I think in this case it does work with the watch and the lugs. Uh, Solid stainless steel screw down case back, 100 meters of water resistance. On the inside, it is running on a Miyota 9039 movement. I believe it said it back there, right? Yeah, 9039. It says it right there. I guess I'll just flip my notes because my, my notes right now are on quartz notes. So this is, a, of course, part of the Miyota 9, I call it the 9000 series. I don't know if Miyota calls it that, but 9XXX series of movements. These are their, considered their premium or higher grade movements. Um, the most popular of which would be the 9015, which is a date version. The 9039 has no date, as you can see. They also make a date date. They make them with extra needles. They make them with power reserve indicators. Uh, but this would be comparable to... You know, I, I guess uh, if your um, your new 821A or 8215 with hand winding hacking could be considered to be like your Seiko NH35, this could be kind of like your NE15 or 6R15 movement, making some really loose uh, approximations here. But definitely, this is their higher this is the higher grade Miyota movement. It beats at 20,800 beats per hour. So the seconds hand has a high amount of fluidity to it. it is taking away the same rate as a rolex does if it means anything to you at eight ticks per second very smooth very well done beautiful cut diamond cut crown look check that out really nice beautiful case finishing the brushing signed crown beautiful strap real rivets that are going through the strap real screws i should say they're not rivets even better so you know they're not going to snap on you Nice, nicely designed buckle and signed. See that on both sides of the buckle. Nice stitching. Really, nothing left uh, to uh, you know to cheapen out the watch. The bezel is a 120 click unidirectional ceramic bezel with loom. We'll do, of course, a loom shot in a moment. And the dial is extremely simple to read. Uh, Whoops. Uh, oh, by the way, nice knurling on the uh, coinage bezel here to really grip it, even with my gloves. Uh, nice. The, the dial is very simple. 12369. Very simple on the, I guess you call it kind of the chapter ring, uh, the part on the outside of the dial, the hands. Very easy to read. Orange accent on the seconds hand. Uh, price on this one is 549 
just a beautiful watch. Awesome. But I'm going to get into my buddy, the HF6. So everything about this watch is pretty much the same as the prior. It's the same case, 15 millimeters by 42 by 49 on the tip to tip. Uh, Anti-reflective sapphire crystal, 100 meters of water resistance, beautiful crown. Case back obviously is a bit different. Uh, it still has the Stratus, and then on the bottom it's got VH31. So that's the movement we're dealing with. Uh, you may remember that Hemel and some other brands use a VK64, which is your Mecha Quartz movement. This is kind of like a Mecha Quartz movement, but we're not dealing with a chronograph here. We're dealing with it. it's kind of a gearing system that activates the seconds hand. So what kind of intervals are we looking at? Well, the seconds hand is beating at four times a second. It has such, it should be humming to me, like personally, uh, it has such a vintage vibe to it. Not the style of the watch, the movement. The movement of the movement. I love how nice that looks. And home run by putting electronic on the dial instead of quartz. It just, I don't know, it completes the whole package. It puts the whole thing together. It looks awesome. So nifty. So the price for the um, this quartz version is a hundred bucks less. It's four forty nine. So really, the difference in these two is is just the movement. Uh, that that's pretty much your cost differential here. Um, so kind of makes sense on the pricing. Looks great. Um, I was curious about the movement itself. I did go. It's a, so it's a Seiko caliber VH thirty one or TMI. SII, they go by so many names. Um, they do rate the battery of this movement at about two years. Uh, so good to know, maybe a little more frequently than three, four years, you might get some batteries, but obviously you're getting a lot out of the battery. It's doing a lot of work. So it's good to know they probably have to replace it every two years or so. But with a solid screw down case back, replacing the battery is simple and it is a normal uh, button cell battery. Let's check out the loom on these bad boys. So uh, Marvin, the founder of Hemel, knows what you guys need and want. Check it out. Um, you can tell which one's the auto and which one's the quartz just by looking at the tip of the seconds hand going around. But the loom is the same. The bezel looks awesome. The orange at the bezel tip is not, is not illuminated. So... I guess that's your registration to your 12 o'clock mark. Kind of interesting, almost like a negative way of doing things, but it is C3 uh, Super Luminova. So since they are the same case, they will both fit me the same. So here is that electronic version. Looks awesome. Below the bone, above the bone. My six and three quarter inch wrist, I am one hole away from the end of the strap. So it looks like we're going down to about a six and a half which for a 42 millimeter watch is probably about the right spot. And then you're going to go up, um, what, about seven and three quarters or so to eight inch wrist. Looks awesome, feels amazing, and that second hand is just to die for on a quartz. And that'll do it. And this has been Mark from LongNightWatch.com showing you a couple of new Hemels to hit the store. The Stratus in both automatic and electronic. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. And I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.